This is going to create some controversy, but what if you could skip the online forms, the gatekeepers, having your reel on file and go directly to the decision makers and have the opportunity to build a genuine connection, build a relationship with all of the impossible to reach people and get anybody's email address in seconds. Watch this video. Hi, I'm Alan McKay and I wanted to start this video just saying that one of the biggest things that we focus on is building out our reel, building out our portfolio, which is the most critical part to getting work. However, the biggest thing is that once we do it, we just kind of let it go. We, we throw it out there and hope for the best, okay? So what I wanna do instead is quickly just walk through what typically happens when you apply for a job. And I'm doing this from the perspective of someone that hires teams for a living, builds teams, hires artists, and uh, works on productions. And then I also want to then be able to give you some shortcuts and things that I do personally to really benefit my career. First of all, when you apply for a job, especially right now, there are so many job positions available, movie industry, games, design, whether you're in illustration, uh, all these different areas, there's so much work going on, which is awesome, okay? It's, it's thriving more than ever. But at the same time, there's as many people being pumped out of schools constantly as well. So you to keep that in mind that as the volume of jobs come up, so is the volume of people applying. So it kind of evenly works out, it's very balanced, but, the big difference is that studios and clients now need to manage a lot more resources than they ever have before. So they got to think smart. So a lot of database systems come into play. So instead of being able to mail in a reel, walk in with a reel, all the things that we used to do, now there's the job application online. You go on there, you submit your reel, you fill out a questionnaire, and what it does is it filters and breaks everything up and, and tags everything and sets it up in a system which is able to essentially shortlist it all. So most systems will work this way that once your stuff goes in there, it's essentially going to either be uh, relevant or irrelevant. And 90% of the applications that go in essentially are going to be shortlisted out of the system because you're not at the level that they're really considering, okay? So you'll be in the system, the more times you apply and the better you get, the more they'll have that history of your work and your application getting better. But when it comes to actually being considered for a job, most of the time you're being filtered out of there, okay? So it's very volatile and something that you really need to take into consideration. The key thing is that once you do apply, if you are shortlisted, in other words, if you come in and you say, I've got three years experience and you're, you're able to categorize yourself correctly and say, I'm a designer or I'm a character animator, something very specific that they're able to say, okay, great, well, we need a, we have a need for that. Rather than saying I'm a 3D artist or something that's a bit more generic and less likely to get flagged in the right category that's really gonna get put in front of the right person. What's gonna happen is if you are a discipline, if you actually put yourself in as, let's say, a character animator, what will happen then is you go in the database and when they finally do need character animators, that's when the supervisor reaches out to the HR department or human resources or the recruiters and says, hey, we need a bunch of animators. They go in and the ones that were at the top, in other words, that weren't filtered out, they get sent on. But typically it's gonna be a database uh, or a spreadsheet of 100, 200 people that will be sent out. So again, keeping in mind that a supervisor's job is not to hire people, it's not to look at reels and look at resumes and evaluate all this stuff. A supervisor is supervising a team. They're dealing with deadlines, they're having meetings, they're dealing with the producer or the director, um, making sure that everyone's happy. They're attending all the meetings, but they're also uh, managing their teams and making sure they're all hitting all the, the schedule points that they need. A supervisor is supervising. Okay, so when when it comes to hiring, it's a okay. So when it comes to hiring, that's a, a whole additional thing on top of everything they're doing. So when you get a database, because I've done this a hundred times, I get a database of two hundred people, and it's all been stripped down. Everything that they did from writing their life story about them and their dog and why you need to hire them and all those things that you've done all get stripped away. All you get is a name. Uh, an email address and a link to the reel, and then a link to their resume as well if, if you want to peruse that. And usually I'm, I'm never going to look at a resume until it comes to deciding if I actually am interested in that person. So when you have a large amount of emails or, or people to go through, you're going to copy paste play. So in other words, you're going to copy the, the link for the reel, paste it into my browser, hit play. So copy paste play and watch through it. Now, if for whatever reason it starts out slow or it's kind of boring in the beginning, I'm gonna to move to the next one. Now, um, 
Either that or you're gonna start skipping through it. Either way, you need to captivate people from the very beginning. There's all these steps and processes to go through the whole entire time. Now, the biggest thing is that when you're sandwiched in there with all the information that made you special, where you got to sell yourself the entire time, all of that stripped away, all you're left with is literally your reel and no backstory behind it. Now, on top of that, you've got all these other people competing for the same amount of attention. Okay, so already it's very volatile the way that you apply. You're either not even gonna get considered or if you do, it's gonna be a short list of people that's still 200 artists that are all competing for those four or five positions. You have about 0.5% chance of really getting their attention more than anyone else. Now, here's the strategy that I wanna go through here is going to be, what if you could just directly contact the decision maker? Skip the gatekeeper. The gatekeepers are the people who man the phones or, or man the resumes, in other words, uh, receptionist or recruiters, HR, people like that. So if you're putting your reel in the traditional way that everyone else is, then you're gonna be going through the same process as everyone else, every other candidate. Now, if you think differently and do it a different way, then you're singling yourself out and creating a new, unique opportunity for yourself. So in this situation, what I would do is I would want to contact the person who decides who gets hired, who doesn't first. I would wanna contact them directly. Most importantly, because I'm gonna stand out. Secondly, because I get to sell myself with an actual email rather than going through the traditional way of doing things, which would be, like I said, putting, being put in that spreadsheet outside of everyone else, okay? So contacting them directly is the most critical thing to do. But on top of that, for me, I'm not going to email a stranger and say, hi, you don't know me, give me a job, which is what 99% of people do. I get those emails all day long. What I wanna do instead is focus on building a relationship. Now, I've got a video I've put out which is focused around that too. Uh, it talks a lot about that, but I can't emphasize enough that if you email someone directly because you have their email address and you figure I'm just gonna go for the kill and, and fire that out, most of the time you're not gonna get results. Most of the time you're not gonna get your reel clicked on in the first place and maybe not even the email loaded in the first place either. So you gotta keep in mind all these things that if you go out there and just go, gimme, 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 in other words, you don't know me, give me a job, then you're probably not gonna get a response. But if you were to think differently about it and focus on giving value or bringing value and being able to stand out in a way that you're building a relationship long-term, that is more likely to get a result. And more importantly, when you really figure this out, you iron it all out, you know, I test everything. I'll, I, I've got a lot of tools and I'll, I'll go into them in another video of how I can track if someone's opened an email, track if they've clicked the email. Um, you can get even more creepy with being able to actually see what they're seeing on their screen as they go through it um, by hosting it on your webpage and having a lot of tools around that. So again, you can build a whole system around it, but the most important thing is by doing that, you can test um, how captivated they are how engaged they are. And that's the critical thing about it is that if you can um, tweak things on a smaller scale, you know, send it out to 10 people, you know, start to test that are they clicking on the email? If no, then tweak the subject headline. If they're clicking on it, but they're not opening the link to the reel, then I've got to work on my email body and make sure that uh, the email is engaging enough that it's motivating them to click the link. Now, if they're clicking on the link, but they're, then they're skipping through the reel, again, you can watch the video analytics to see where they drop off then I know that there's something wrong with the reel and I need to revise that. It sounds like a lot of work, but this is your career. And if you can get that success, then it's gonna be a lot more beneficial. Most of us don't do any of this. They make a reel and then we say, okay, great. I'm gonna fire it out to everyone because I think it's awesome and my mom thinks it's awesome and my buddies are telling me it's great. So this'll do. And then we start sending it out reel after reel after reel for six months, 12 months, whatever it might be. Instead, you can Focus on doing it with 10 people until you get that success, that 100% success result where you're getting replies, maybe not a job, but you're getting actual responses. And then once you've tweaked it, finessed it, the, the email headline, the email script, the reel itself, all of the ways that you're presenting and selling yourself, then you can open the floodgates and send it out to thousands of people knowing that the success works. So we all know the saying, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. But that's what we're doing with our reel. We're firing it out over and over and over and it's not revised, it's not refined. But instead, if we fire it out a bunch of times, tweak it, perfect it, get it to the point where it is that irresistible reel, then at that point, we can then, like I said, open the floodgates and know that we are gonna get results on a thousand X scale opposed to before firing at a dud 
and expecting that somehow the first hundred people didn't like our reel, but the next hundred will, okay? Because it's not gonna happen. Okay, so it's time to think smart and be strategic with what we're doing and really perfect it as if this is the product that we're selling, because we are, we're selling ourselves with our reel. Okay, so I wanna emphasize that as we get into this, because it's so critical to think beyond spamming your reel out, thinking that that's gonna get results. You can skip all the gatekeepers and everyone else because um, you know, we want to be able to get in front of the right people to focus on building a relationship, not getting in front of the right people so that way we can just spam out our reel and I think that that is gonna be any different than if we were to put it through the database. So I hope that makes sense as we get into this video and I know that this is a, a long wind up to get into uh, what will be a pretty short, you know, 10 minute, five minute video showcasing um, how I get email addresses and how I do all the stuff. But again, I wanna emphasize that going out and spamming people with your reel and firing out that dud is not gonna get you results. So that's why it's so critical to think about the big picture, uh, work on getting the result instead, work on getting the relationship and building and nurturing that instead. And that's what's gonna get you the job in the long term, but more importantly, it's gonna build a, a, a potential relationship that could last you the rest of your life, giving you more and more work. Okay, so I always say you wanna build the well before you're thirsty. So you don't wanna be in a situation where you really need a job and you don't have anything lined up, rather than knowing 10, 20, 30 people that all could potentially give you work and knowing that at least a few of them are gonna be hiring at any given moment. Okay, so again, think big, think about the big picture rather than focusing on just trying to get that result right now because it's not gonna work that way. Okay, so that being said, let's get into how to get anyone's email address. The last thing I wanna to emphasize too is this applies to anyone in any industry, okay? So I use this to get podcast guests, I'm able to get access to a lot of big directors, I'm able to uh, get access to a lot of potential agencies and clients and things like that. So. Um, this system, whether you're an artist who's trying to get your first job or whether you're a supervisor or whether you own your own studio and you're trying to get seven figure projects, all of this system applies the exact same way. This is called outreach and this is how and why we should be constantly making contact with people and building these relationships. The more that we're able to get in front of people and sell ourselves, the more we can then begin to set up these relationships for the long term and it all starts here, okay? So that being said, let's get started. Okay, so there are dozens of ways to get people's contact information in terms of like, who do I initially reach out to? Um, so LinkedIn is a really great resource, but let's say that you just want to look at movie credits. Seriously, just if you look at the end of a movie, you see the credits come up, it's going to say ILM, Digital Domain, all these different studios. And then it's going to say all the key people, like all the heads, the supervisors, um, all the people that you probably want to be writing down their name. Okay, so honestly, like looking at movies and just seeing who are the go-to people, who are the people that I could probably reach out to uh, for work. Keep that in mind. Now, in addition to that, um, just using Google is honestly just really straightforward because you can just type in a commercial or a project and say, okay, um, who are the names of the people responsible for this? Now, I mention this too because ideally, you want to be applying for jobs that you actually want to work on. In other words, you see a car commercial that you really like, you wanna target a studio that does work like that rather than just applying to anywhere. So knowing that is really important. On top of that, when you do reach out to them, you can reference that commercial, you can reference that project. Hey, I really love the work you did on that new Nissan commercial, whatever it might be. Okay, so keep in mind that that is a better, more genuine way to approach it. I'll leave that up to you. Um, you can literally just go into LinkedIn and do it there or I was just clicking here randomly because if I was on my feed, it comes up with a hundred videos. So I just thought of something that doesn't, uh, isn't too distracting, but um, LinkedIn is a great resource that not, like, not everyone uses it, but everyone has an account. Cause I think they're like me. They're like, well, I don't really use it, but um, you know, I'm sure it'll be useful for something someday. So better to have it now than not. Um, so everyone has an account. They probably don't check it too often. Uh, so just keep that in mind, but having it means that you can track down a lot of people. And it's pretty easy if I wanted to type in industrial light magic uh, soup, okay? That's all I would need to type in. And it's gonna bring up, sorry, I'm doing this actually in the wrong area because I clicked on jobs. So in here though, that's all I need to really put in and it's gonna come up with every supervisor or uh, similar names in there, okay? so. So I'm going to uh, use Method Studios and that's just because I have in the past. So I figure, um, again, like 
you know, you, I need to have an example, but I don't want to go around divulging too much people's information. So uh, I'm going to use uh, Method Studios just because I have already. So um, in this case, let's say I was looking for uh, compositors here. Usually I'm going to type in comp uh, rather than compositing or whatever, because it might be compositing, compositor. So in other words, compositing artist, com uh, comp artist. I think I saw one in here uh, described that way. So again, like looking, there's yeah, comp artist here, uh, compositing, comp artist. So because the terminology is different each time, it's either better to know the lingo or it's better to, um, to go a bit more broad because this person simply just says comp, okay? So having this information, it means like it's a lot easier to kind of um, understand like what to what to go for. So again, like with effects, I might say particle artist, fluid specialist, you know, it's, it's important to understand the lingo. So by doing comp, I could then do like soup. So if I'm looking for a compositing supervisor, I could say uh, this one here, you know, I could continue to go through and just like look for um, particular people that, you know, might be good leads for me to try and chase up. Okay. So just in general, um, that's typically, you know, I could just go in here and literally type in the roles and come up with some good leads. So let's say in this case, I've got two people, uh, the digital effects supervisor at method and then uh, animation soup at method. So these two people, if I want to get their emails, there's a few different ways that I can do it. Uh, I've brought up a few here, um, different tools, like there's many that we can go through, but just for instance, one example I could use is cell hack and cell hack is free. It's a Google Chrome extension, or at least it can be free. And we just say Fernando Zerilla and then, um, method studios. So, and it's going to guess the domain. Um, I will just mention that, um, cell hack to me is one of the mediocre ones. Like it, it's not bad. But I'd rather kind of start here and then go from go from there. So typing it in, it's come back with what I'm assuming is pattern recognition. So it's, it's guessing based on the structure of the emails that that's um, perhaps what it is. So 65% match is not good enough. But if we wanted, we could get that email address and then go into mail tester. A mail tester is again free and it would allow me to val uh, verify whether or not that's a legit email. So it's saying that that is not the email address, okay? So that's typically how you could start out, is, um, you know, there's a few Google Chrome extensions, things like that. Now, the other thing I could do is type it in, in uh, Volar Norbit. There's a few other ones that are really good. Adapt IO is okay. Uh, so for instance, I could say, uh, methodstudios.com and just by typing that in it's actually going to spit out um, all the emails I can potentially get of all the people and doing it this way I can actually see their job title so if I wanted to specifically um, you know look for someone because I didn't know who to contact this would allow me to do that and I could get their email um, of course uh, this is free I think you get like 50 leads something like that so um, you know, if I wanted to use it up, I could, but there's another option. If I wanted, we could go into Vola Norbit and Vola Norbit, um, Fernando Zorilla, methodstudios.com. Okay. So find that lead and Vola Norbit. These are my two favorite tools. These are rock solid. I really find these to be the most effective. So typing that in. And we can see that that's come up. So now I can see over here, um, CG supervisor, Method Studios, LA. And it's really creepy. You got the phone number, address, everything. So anyway, um, that's basically it. Like it's, it's pretty straightforward. Same thing, we'll find that lead. I could do the same thing here. So with this guy, let's say Daniel Mizuguchi and then uh, methodstudios.com. Okay, so again, uh, emails come up, same thing here. So these two tools, like find that lead I've purchased, I got a really good deal on it, but it's um, it's pretty affordable and I'm pretty sure there's like a free 
uh, thing for it. Uh, I find it'd be rock solid for many different reasons, but uh, Vola and Orbit, you get 50 for free. So maybe sign up with a few different email addresses if you want to avoid it. But um, I'm only mentioning ones that are affordable because there are many different uh, CRM and sales tools out there. But I want to only bring up ones that you probably could introduce as part of your system if you wanted to pay for them. Um, so find that lead while I know, but we're my two favorite. Mail tester is one that is good for verifying emails pretty quickly. Um, you know, so that's one option. And then uh, another thing that's kind of interesting is I can go into my email and I have a thing called full contact. And here I can type in their email address. And if it's correct, not all the time, but most of the time it's going to come up with a picture of them, uh, links to all their social media, so Twitter and everything else. Uh, their title, where they work, sometimes their phone number, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I find that to be really interesting. I could do me, for instance, and all right. So I mean, it, it came up with my info, so it's valid. But uh, sometimes it'll come up with like a picture of you and everything else. Um, so I find this stuff to be really interesting and, and easy to use. There's another one called Clearbit, which does similar, where I could just uh, in here click a button, and it's going to pop up with. Um, you know, pick a company and you literally just type in the company and it'll spit out all their email addresses as well as their name and title. So I could just say, okay, CEO, done, and fired an email. So there's so many really advanced tools out there that typically we don't know about because we're not in sales, but if you are kind of more on the high-end sales and you need to get leads that are very hard to get, let's say a, a senior um, person at, let's say a product manager at Apple or something, um, this is where you're able to pull all that information very easily. So again, this is just, um, I don't know Todd's there. That's cool. So, um, yeah, th this is just a very simple system that you can use very quickly to get emails. And there are many other tools, but like I said, like, honestly, my two are find that lead and, and voila and orbit. These two, I pretty much don't need anything else, but it is interesting to try out some of the other ones like adapt hunter.io. Um, and then sell hack clear bit. There's many other ones as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, there's loads of tools out there, but these are ones that I've tested that I get almost hundred percent, uh, accuracy with. And like I said before, the whole idea of this is that you don't just grab someone's email address and start spamming out your reel. You use it as a way to establish rapport and, and build them out as a contact, like build a relationship with them. So I'm not going to email someone, hey man, here's my reel, check it out, because I get those emails all the time. And like, why would I open that? But if you put thought into it and, and some incentive, then you know potentially you could build a relationship which could lead to work. So be responsible with this. Don't just think, great, Alan just taught me how to email anybody now to 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 go and um, start spamming everyone. Be intelligent about it. Okay, so I hope you found the valuable. Like I said, this portion of the video was kind of quick and a big wind up to get to it. But again, I want to do that because I don't want you just to be like, all right, now I can get anyone's email address. Time to start hitting up John Nolan, Dennis Muren, and everyone else and start spamming out my reel. Like I said, that's not going to give you the results that you want. What you want to do is focus on the relationship. Okay, I cannot emphasize that enough, but this is one piece of the puzzle. So I have another video coming out, which is my perfect outreach system. So this is my actual system I use to be able to fire out emails day after day after day and build relationships constantly. But beyond that, it's like, well, how do you actually write the perfect email? How do you write the perfect email script to get work, to be able to know what to say to these people? And if they don't reply, then what do you do then? Okay, well, how do you follow up in a way that isn't like, hi, did you get my last email and be intelligent and be able to bring something to the table? There's all of these different parts and they all come together to build up the way to get result after result. So that is one piece of the puzzle right here is how to get an email address. But then it's like, how do you build a system that you can constantly and also consistently be able to get work all the time and also fire out emails every single day without it becoming um, too much of a time suck? Okay, and all of the things like how do you say the right things to them. On top of that, how do you test it all? I mentioned earlier on about how you can track it if anyone's ever opened an email or how uh, to track if they've watched the video or if they click the link. Um, be able to spy on the screen, which again is so creepy, you've got to see it, but you can do it. Um, you know, all of these things, all of these tools, these are all part of the strategy. It's all a, a much bigger picture, but it starts with 
being able to find people and again how do you find the contacts and then all of the other bits and pieces so uh, i'll be posting videos on all this stuff but at the same time if you have questions leave a comment below and let me know subscribe because that way you'll get access to all the other videos as they come out uh, and on top of that like i said let me know what your thoughts are i'd love to be able to build some additional videos and other content specifically to help you with what you're doing and I realize I'm talking fast, I'm Australian, and this is what we do, but I hope you got a lot from this video. Again, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.